Now starting, all attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon and welcome to our webinar on what you need to know about Sugar CRM Enterprise. We'd like to thank you for joining us today. Um, before we begin, I'd like to mention two quick things. First, this webinar will be recorded and emailed to you with slides following the live event, and we'll also post it to our website at www.techadb.com. Secondly, if you have any questions as we go along, please send them using the chat option of your GoToWebinar. We've anticipated a few of the questions we think you might have, so we'll address those within the webinar, but then we'll also go ahead and answer as many questions as we can at the end of the presentation. If for some reason we don't get to your question, we're happy to follow up with you personally after the broadcast. Okay, let's get started. Um, my name is Janine, and I'm the Marketing Manager at Technology Advisors. I will be your host today. Our Sugar CRM expert, Megan, will be presenting the webinar. Let's take a glance at what we'll be covering. As you can see, we'll delve into some of the major features of Sugar CRM Enterprise, including the advanced workflow functions. Megan will demo the workflow for you later in the webinar and will tell you how to take advantage of a special upgrade offer. So at this time, I would like to turn the floor over to Megan. Great, thanks, Deneen. So as Deneen said, we're gonna talk a little bit about the advantages of Sugar Enterprise when compared to Sugar Professional. And one of the key advantages, a new feature that Sugar has just released in version uh, seven six is called advanced workflow. Advanced workflow is really a business process automation tool, and there are just thousands of different things you can do with advanced workflow. So this slide has a whole bunch of examples on that. I'm not going to read them all to you, but what you really want to know right from the beginning is this is a tool that can handle complex processes across your business, across different departments, whether that's sales, whether that's marketing, whether it's service, whether it's all three, and automating those processes within Sugar CRM. As Deneen said later on in the webinar, we're gonna do an actual demo of Advanced Workflow, so you'll get to actually see it in action and we'll go through an example so you can see some of the things that Advanced Workflow can do. So how is Advanced Workflow different than the workflow tool that you might be using today in Sugar Professional, or even in Sugar Enterprise if you were using you know, the old workflow tool before the introduction of this new Advanced Workflow? Um, advanced Workflow is really designed to orchestrate customer interactions and to work across departments, devices, and systems. So one of my favorite things about Advanced Workflow is it's got a visual editor. We'll see more about that in the next couple of slides here. And it also has what it calls a business rules editor. You can use business rules to set up a set of rules that will be used in one or more processes. And it makes it easier to manage complex processes and business and rules that drive them. Uh, Advanced Workflow also has visual status monitoring where you can see where a particular instance of a process is at any given moment. And it does have the ability to do automated email notifications. So here's a little bit bigger screenshot, and again, we're gonna see this live in the system, of what the advanced workflow visual designer looks like. As you can see, advanced workflow has the ability to do much more complex processes than the workflow tool that you have been used to using in Sugar CRM. So this example, and this is the same one we're gonna look at in a little bit more detail later on, is a quote approval process. And you can see it has the ability to do different branches within that process and multiple steps along the way. And this visual designer makes it really easy to create these processes. It's a drag and drop interface where you bring the pieces on and connect them together in the order that you want them to process. Advanced Workflow also has the ability to monitor the processes that are being run. So this is an administration view where you can see all of the processes that are currently running or even processes that already have completed with your data. And so you can see where is that process right now, who is it assigned to, who is it waiting on, um, and what step is it on within the process. And I think my next slide's got a screenshot, it's a little bigger. Yep, there we go. So 
what you can see here is, you know, again, that same process. This is where it's actually running against a particular quote. And this particular quote has taken these steps so far that are kind of color coded. Anything that's grayed out is something that it hasn't happened within this process, either because it didn't go down that branch or because it just hasn't gotten that far yet. So it makes it really easy to see what's going on and where that particular instance of that process is. So I think I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, Advanced Workflow also has a rules builder in it where you can set up your business rules to create conditions for different actions. Essentially, this makes it a lot more a lot easier to manage or conditions within your workflows. So if X is true, do A. If Y is true, do B. If Z is true, do C. Without having to have multiple workflow processes to manage all of those different variations that might occur depending on what's true. So this example has uh, mapping for different tier levels. Depending on what tier a customer is, a different result is going to happen. We'll see one a little bit later on in the demo for doing territory assignments as well. And then just like the existing workflow tool within Sugar, you can use advanced workflow to automate notifications um, with customizable templates where you can send emails to users or to contacts and leads as recipients. Um, and so you can do that to notify them that something's happened or what the next step in the process might be, just like you would do with your existing workflow processes today. To sum it up, here's a couple of other things that you can do with advanced workflow. And again, I'm not going to try to read this whole slide to you. Um, but one of the key differentiators between the old existing workflow system and advanced workflow is advanced workflow can do a lot more complex logic. You can have or conditions, you can have branching gateways like we saw in that example, um, you can have those business rules where you can set different results based on a condition. As we saw again in that example, you can have multiple steps within your process and different conditions that it's checking along the way. So it just makes it a lot easier and a lot more realistic of what your actual business processes look like. Uh, besides doing email notifications, some other things you can do with workflows, you can do uh, approval processes, you can do routing processes, maybe a lead comes in, you can't assign it automatically for whatever reason, it doesn't fall into any of the automatic conditions, and so therefore you want to send it to someone who's going to decide who to assign that lead to. Uh, just as a quick example of that. Uh, it can also update data within Sugar and send emails just like existing workflow tool can do. As part of Sugar's implementation of advanced workflow, they have recently announced that the old legacy workflow tool will have an end of life and they'll be removing it from the product. Now, that's still pretty tentatively scheduled at this point, but they're saying the earliest it would happen would be December 31st of 2016, so the end of next year, and it will be tied to a specific Sugar release around that time. Um, since Advanced Workflow is an enterprise-only feature, that does mean Sugar Professional isn't going to have any sort of a workflow tool in it after that point. I'm sure we'll have some more questions about that. Uh, we'll come back to that when we get to Q&A at the end. Uh, but that is what Sugar is telling us at this point in time. So let's move on to some other features or benefits of Sugar Enterprise. And we will come back to advanced workflow with the demo and then with Q&A at the end. Some of the other things that you can do with Sugar Professional uh, that you can't do, I'm sorry, with Sugar Enterprise that you can't do with Sugar Professional are create role-based views. Essentially what that means is that you can have different screen layouts for different types of users within your organization. So you can highlight different data that's going to be more customized to what they need to be able to do within the system. Uh, so just a quick example of that, as you can see on the screen here, the information I'm displaying to a salesperson and someone in service might be different So because someone in service needs to see different information at a glance than someone in sales does. 
As part of this, you can also do custom uh, role-based dropdowns. So if you want to provide different options on a list to users of one type versus another, that's another related feature to this role-based views option. And so this is something you can use, first of all, to just make it easier for your users by highlighting the information that's relevant to their job rather than having to show all of the information to everyone in the same order, even if person A versus person B really need to see different things. It's also something you can use to hide data that maybe you don't want to share with everybody. Maybe you have certain characteristics or facts about your accounts that are only necessary for your service team and your sales team doesn't really need access to that information. You can have it on the service layout but not the sales view and then the sales team isn't going to see that information. Another feature that's available in Sugar Enterprise is multi-line item opportunity management and forecasting. Essentially what this means is that there's an additional module in Sugar Enterprise available that is called revenue line items. And the revenue line items module, as you can kind of see on the screenshot here, lives underneath an opportunity and gives you the ability to associate multiple line items with a single opportunity. So you can track different components or different items that might be part of a sale where you're still trying to win a group of business from one particular account, but maybe there's different things closing at different times or with different probabilities that you want to track. And so each line item has its own pricing, its own date, its own probability, its own sales stage, and it just gives you the ability to do a little bit more granular detail around the opportunities that you're tracking. If you're using revenue line items, you then also forecast based off of revenue line items. So that gives me the ability to uh, say, for example, within this particular sale that we're seeing here, there's five different revenue line items. Um, but several of them are a little bit further along in the sales process than others. And so maybe I want to include this $6,600 in my forecast, but I don't want to use all the rest of these items in my forecast. I can select to include just this one item that I'm feeling pretty confident about and not the others when I do my forecasting. And so that just makes my forecast that much more accurate and that much more useful to me when I can have a little bit more control over how much I think is actually going to be in the final sale. Uh, I will also add one more thing before I move on, and that is that this this and really any of these enterprise features are not things that you have to use if you should decide to use Sugar Enterprise. Um, you can turn any of these features off. So if you want to go to Sugar Enterprise, but you're looking at this revenue line items thing saying, you know, that's not really something I'm interested in, you can turn that feature off and any of these extra features that we're seeing, you don't have to use any of them. One of the last key features that is available with Sugar Enterprise but not professional is called the Customer Self-Service Portal. This is a feature that goes along with the customer service features in Sugar CRM, particularly the cases module, where you can track customer issues or tickets, whatever the terminology might be in your business. What the Customer Self-Service Portal allows you to do is have a place for your customers to log in and interact with your service team. So customers can log in and they can see cases that they've opened in the past. They can see the status of those cases and any notes that your team has chosen to share with them through the portal. And they can also create new cases. So if I'm having a problem, I can log into the portal and create a case there. And it's going to go straight into your cases module in Sugar and be assigned to the appropriate uh, representative of your service team. This is something that just gives your customers another way to interact with you and to reach out to you. Um, maybe cuts down a little bit on some of the phone calls that your customer service team needs to take because it gives your customers another route to get that issue into you. It also lets them feel updated on what's going on with their issue. They can log in, they can look to see, has someone posted a report? What's the next step? What's going on with my particular issue? The other nice aspect of the customer self-service portal is that you can share knowledge base articles with them. Um, if, you, if you're not familiar with the knowledge base module in Sugar, it's a place where you can track frequently asked questions or responses to some common issues that come up, processes that you need to share with your customers or internally. And so with the customer self-service portal, you can select to share some or all of your knowledge base articles with your customers through the portal. 
and it becomes a place for them to search for solutions and maybe they can even solve some of their problems without contacting your service team. And so as part of Sugar Enterprise, if you're hosted on demand, Sugar will set up a portal for you and host that as well. And you can have up to 100 customers logged into that portal at any given moment. All right, and the last little kind of catch-all category we've got here at the end is some additional storage and support features that come along with Sugar Enterprise. Um, first of all, your Sugar On Demand instance is backed up twice as often if you're on Sugar Enterprise. Uh, so it is backed up either way, but just more frequently backed up in case you have any issues. Um, Sugar On Demand customers who are on Enterprise also get two free sandboxes hosted on Sugar On Demand. A sandbox is essentially a backup copy of your Sugar instance that you can interact with. So if you want to test out a new process that you're going to change or you want to add a new custom module or test out an add-on that you're looking at, all of those things can be run in a sandbox so that your users are not impacted by any changes that that cause. It gives you a chance to play around with it, to test out your development or your changes and see if it works before deploying it out to all your users. Sugar Enterprise also comes with four times as much storage. It goes up to 60 gig gigabytes of on-demand storage for your Sugar instance. Um, if you're hosting your own Sugar, there's support for Oracle and DB2 database types, and also comes with increased Sugar support SLAs. So you go up to 12 by 5 email support, as well as adding phone support with Sugar Enterprise. So you can actually call into Sugar support and talk to somebody there when you have a question or an issue. Um, also decreases the response time. So for example, the, two, the response time on a critical issue with Sugar Enterprise is two hours. All right, that sums up the key differences between Sugar Professional and Sugar Enterprise. So what we'd like to do now is bring up Sugar and show you a little bit more of advanced workflow. All right, so I am logged in here to Sugar as an administrator. This is something that just like the existing workflow tool in Sugar today would be managed by an administrator. Um, and they've chosen to enable this tool through the homepage dashboard. So I've got a number of different dashboards here that go along with advanced workflow that I can use as an administrator. I'm going to go ahead and jump right into uh, the quote approval process here and look at the process designer. So this is the same screenshot we were looking at a little bit earlier of this quote approval process. And so what I want to do is walk through it a little bit, talk about how this is set up and some of the other things you can do. And then we're going to actually see it work in action. This particular process starts when a new quote is created. And then it goes immediately to a gateway to where it's going to check a condition for us. Um, in this case, it's going to check the total discount amount that was applied to this particular quote. And it's going to branch off depending on if the discount was greater than $10,000 or less than $10,000. It's going to route to different people for approval. So this is an example of a, a gateway that you can have within your advanced workflow processes where depending on a condition, you can decide to take one step or a different step automatically. Once it gets to either of these two steps, the appropriate user is going to see an alert on their home page that there's a process waiting for their approval. And again, we'll actually see this happen. I'm going to create a quote and send it to one of these guys for approval. So we'll see what happens from that user's perspective. Uh, they'll click through, they'll look at the quote, and they'll decide, do I want to approve that discount or do I want to reject that discount? That's going to lead to another branch within our process. If they approve it, one thing will happen. If they, just, if they reject it, another thing will happen. And essentially what we're going to do is a couple of things in either case. We're going to update some data in Sugar, which is what all of these different icons are. And then we're going to send an email out 
telling the appropriate user that it was approved or rejected. And that's going to be the end of our process once that happens. Now, all of the details within this process are accessed in each of these elements by just right clicking on them and going to the settings. So for example, if I wanted to update this process and say, you know, the $10,000 amount isn't relevant anymore, 15,000 is going to be our new breakpoint. I can come in here and I can edit and just set a new condition here. I can see right now, if it's less than 10,000, it goes to the sales manager. Greater than or equal to 10,000 goes to the VP of sales. So if I click in here, it will bring up the criteria builder. And I can go ahead and click through the menu. And I can say, actually, we're going to change it to discount total is less than 15,000. Add that in here and take the old condition out. And I can do the same thing here so that it continues to match. Uh, discount total is greater than or equal to 15,000. It's got a nice warning here telling me that right now my condition doesn't make any sense because right now I'm saying two different things. Um, I can do and or logic if I do want to actually join multiple conditions like that. It wouldn't really make sense with this condition, but I could say something like, you know, it's greater than or equal to 10,000 or it's greater than or equal to 15,000. And then I wouldn't have a warning if I had an or in there. And you can see from the menu here, there's lots of different types of evaluations I can do with my rules. I can look at data within Sugar, can look at responses on the processes that are just assigned to users. I can look at my business rules, or I can look at who the user is within the process. Let's save that. And the same thing is true with any of these steps within my process. I can go ahead and right click on any of them and get into the settings and save any changes that I want to make to them. All right, so now that I've done that, let's go ahead and walk through actually seeing this process happen. So I'm going to go create a new quote. And I'm just going to fill in kind of the bare minimum here to get a quote to process. And when I add my item to this quote, I am going to make sure I put a big discount on here. So let's pick a pricey item. Like let's say they're going to buy 10 of these expensive servers. And so I'm going to offer them a $20,000 discount on that purchase. When I save this quote, it's automatically going to start that process. And so it's already at this point, looked at that discount amount, said that's more than $15,000. Person A, which is going to be Jim in this example, needs to evaluate that. So if we go ahead and log in as Jim here, Jim on his homepage has a list of processes that are assigned to him, and one of them is my MS demo quote. Quote approval processes needs, needs his approval. So when he clicks on that, he gets to see everything I just put in for my quote. He can look through all of the details. Um, depending on how this particular process was set up, he may have the ability to make changes at this point, or he might just be in read-only mode. Within the process setup, you can decide that. And up here at the very top of his screen, he's got some extra buttons that normally wouldn't be here when you're looking at a quote, and those are approve and reject. Um, so this was an approval process where Jim gets to decide, yes, I approve this, no, I don't. Uh, let's say he approves it. That now comes off of his process list. He's completed his part. If we were to go back to my other user here, we're going to see it's been updated to say that the discount has been approved. And I don't know if it's actually come through yet, but I will be receiving an email about the fact that that discount was approved. It hasn't come through yet, but I've got one here from earlier today when I was testing this out so you can see what it could look like. Um, in this case, fills in the quote subject, the discount amount that's been approved. And again, this is an automatic template that's been created, so you can fill in as much or as little data from that quote or from that record in Sugar as you want when you create these templates. So that's what this might look like from the user perspective. 
Um, coming back to the administrator perspective for a minute here, let's go look at the process management view. So administrators have access to this process management view where they can see all of the processes that have run or are running. And they can see which process it is, which record it's running against, when it started, and what its current status is. More importantly, if you use that preview button, you can see that visual representation of that and you can click on it to see it full screen. So I can go back and I can trace exactly what happened in this process, which branches it took along the way, and all of the steps that it took. This is really useful if you're troubleshooting a new process or even just trying to make sure that your processes are running the way you're expecting them to. If someone has a question about why did X happen or not happen, you can go back and find out and see what happened with that particular process. If I can find one that's in process here, I'll show you that as well. Here we go. So here's one that hasn't completed yet. This is a different process, not our quote process, but uh, you can see when this one comes in, it actually has a couple different branches it's running at the same time. And I can see which step it's on in each of those branches at this particular moment in time. All right, there's one more feature I want to show you here, and then I know I have to move on to make sure I have time for questions at the end. And that is the business rules piece. So the process business rules make it a lot easier to manage a variety of conditions within a process. For example, something like territories. I've seen in the past situations where we've worked with someone who needs, you know, if the lead comes in and it's in state A, it goes to user A. If it's in state B, it goes to user B and they wind up having 50 different workflow processes, one for each state, which is just a royal pain to manage. What the Business Rules Builder lets you do is put all of those conditions in one place. So if something changes, you have one place to go to update it. This is an example where they're mapping different countries to regions that are gonna be used in a workflow process. And so if it's Germany, that maps to the Europe region. If it's Australia, it maps to Asia Pacific. If I would need to add another country in here, go ahead and click the plus button and I can put my next country in here. If it's, um, who's not on this list anywhere? If it's in Argentina, just type my value in here. Then I'm gonna match that, map that to, whoops, Latin America. This is really powerful because, especially if you're gonna use this in multiple processes or something where you've got a lot of different conditions to manage like this, it makes it so much simpler than having to look through 50 different workflows to make sure that when one of your sales reps changes, leads are getting routed the correct way. So this makes it really clear and easy right on one step to see and match up conditions with results. All right, so in order to make sure we don't run out of time at the end for questions, we're gonna go ahead and move on. Um, but if you have any additional follow-up questions about advanced workflow, feel free to ask us at the end or we'd be happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one demo with you, you know, if you want to see this in more detail. Before we do get to Q&A, there's one other thing on our agenda, which is talking about a promotion that Sugar is running right now. So the list prices of Sugar Professional and Sugar Enterprise are what you're seeing on screen right now. $40 per user per month for Professional, $65 per user per month for Enterprise. Sugar has a promotion running right now where Sugar Professional customers of 100 seats or less can upgrade to Enterprise for $40 per user per month. So paying the list price of Professional but getting Sugar Enterprise. This is a limited time offer. This is gonna be available until the end of this year, December 31st, 2016. Um, we expect that to be a very firm date. We don't expect that to carry over at all into next year. So if this is something you're interested in, it is important that you start acting on this pretty quickly. And this does have the option to lock in this pricing for up to five years by signing a multi-year contract with Sugar. So you can lock in this pricing for one year, two years, three years, five years, 
as many years as you're willing to commit to using sugar serum. If this is something you think you might be interested in or if you have questions about that, I would definitely encourage you to reach out to your sales partner as soon as possible. Um, that would be Megan Drees, our customer advocate. Megan is on the line at the moment. And so you can reach out to her. Her phone number is on my screen right now. You can also just email sales at techadv.com. And I'll have that information up again at the end of the presentation. So if you didn't catch something there now and you want to catch that later, you can get her Megan, information. Just one thing that I'd like to add. Um, we we miss, uh, typed that. It should have been December of 2015 that it's ending. So you basically have a month and a half to, to take advantage of that upgrade option. Yes, thank you. That's correct. The end of this year, December 31st, 2015. Sorry about that typo. All right, so I know I'm sort of keeping an eye on the question panel. So I know a few questions have already started coming in, but if you have other questions, please feel free to start sending those our way now. We did come up with some frequently asked questions that we expect to hear at this point. So I'm gonna run through those while you have a chance to type me your questions. And then any other questions that come in that we haven't already addressed, we'll take care of those after we've gone through these FAQs. Um, so the first one is if you are over 100 seats and currently using Sugar Professional, technically you're not eligible for that promotion. However, Sugar is willing to negotiate with you. So if you're over 100 seats, it doesn't mean you're stuck with Sugar Professional. It just means that it may or may not be exactly the same deal as what they're offering to the under 100 seats customers. Um, expected cost of upgrading to Sugar Enterprise. So the upgrade itself is actually very simple. It's just kind of Sugar flipping a switch on the back end saying that you're Sugar Enterprise and activating these new features. When that happens, users will probably not notice anything that's different. Um, the only thing you might have to watch out for is that revenue line items feature if you don't want to use that, making sure that stays turned off. Um, but unless or until you start implementing any of these new features, the user experience is the same between Sugar Professional and Sugar Enterprise. And one other thing I had in my slide there, but I didn't actually say, although the promotion ends, and again, I've got the wrong date here. I was really bad at dates, apparently. Um, while the promotion ends December 31st, 2015, you don't actually have to upgrade to Enterprise by that date if you're not ready to do it. If you want to wait until January, February, March, April to actually switch your sugar to enterprise, you can do that as long as you commit to the deal by the end of this year. Okay. The date that is actually the end of next year, 2016, is the legacy end of workflow, or legacy workflow end of life. So um, tentatively, end of next year, wouldn't be sooner than that, could be later than that. Sugar will end the legacy workflow tool and it will be tied to an upgrade. So when you upgrade to that new version, workflow is going to be gone. If you had any workflows running, they're going to stop working. They're not going to be there anymore. So if you stay on Sugar Professional, once that change happens, you would not have any workflow tool within your system. Any workflows that you had would be gone and no longer working. Um, you could do the same thing with code customizations. So that would be another option to consider at that point if you don't want to upgrade to Sugar Enterprise. If you do move to Sugar Enterprise, is there a cost to migrate your legacy workflow processes to advanced workflow? Uh, the question on that one is still, or the answer on that is still a little bit up in the air. And Sugar is still trying to decide whether it makes sense to offer some sort of automated conversion process. The reason for that is because a lot of times it doesn't actually make sense to one-to-one -one migrate the old workflow to the new workflow tool. Um, a lot of times multiple old workflows can be combined into a single, much more effective advanced workflow process. And so they're not sure it actually makes sense to automatically migrate them. That said, I know that as of a few weeks ago, this is something that they're still debating internally, and so they may decide to provide some sort of tool to do that. Um, if they don't, or if you decide to make them kind of better processes as part of the migration, there may be some costs associated with that change. 
either working with your partner to do that or spending the time internally to learn the new tool and do it yourself. Uh, this pricing promotion, again, you can decide do you want to lock that in for anywhere from one to five years, but when that promotional pricing ends, um, it's the same as the end of any other contract. You're going to negotiate what your new price for sugar would be at that time. So you're going to no negotiate against whatever the current list price is when you do that renewal. And then just a couple of examples. Um, if you currently pay list price, $40 per user per month for Sugar Professional, then you have absolutely no cost to upgrade to Sugar Enterprise. It's the exact same $40 per user per month during this promotion. Um, if you currently have a discount, maybe you're paying $35 per user per month for Sugar Professional, your cost would be going up to $40 per user per month with this promotion. And so you'd pay the difference, the other $5 per user per month at the time of signing the upgrade or signing the renewal for that matter. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put Megan's contact information back up here, and I know there are a number of other questions. So, Deneen, I'm going to let you decide what questions we're going through in what order, because I know you've been monitoring that. <laughs> sure. Um, we have a question here asking, if we upgrade to Sugar Enterprise for 2016 and decide that the additional features are not needed and they want to revert back to professional, excuse me, in 2017, would there be a penalty or challenge not including the loss of advanced workflows and et cetera? I actually don't know the answer to that. Meg, do you know? Uh, yeah, they should be able to downgrade um, any changes that were made and any of the features that aren't available would be lost. Um, but other than that, uh, it would just be the same as downgrading from when they had the corporate version, which was, you know, end of life as well. Okay. Okay. And then, um, do we know if there are capabilities of the legacy workflows that are going to be missing from the new advanced workflow feature? Currently, yes, there are some things that a legacy workflow can do and advanced workflow cannot. Sugar is going to make sure they address all of those gaps before there is any sort of end of life for the legacy workflow tool. So they have 100% committed to the fact that they will not end of life legacy workflow if advanced workflow cannot do everything that legacy workflow can do today. Um, right now, if you're trying to start playing around with advanced workflow, they've got a really nice knowledge base article about the difference between the two. If you search on Sugar CRM support um, for advanced workflow versus legacy workflow, it pops up really easily. And it kind of walks you through, if you were going to do this right now today, I want to do X, which tool should I use? Excellent. Okay. And then the last question that we have right now is, if we want to increase our number of users during the duration of our promotional pricing contract, can we add them with the same promotional pricing? Um, I can address that one. So. As of now, uh, Sugar put two stipulations on those contracts. If the contract was paid up front, yes, you would get any add-ons within that contract term at the promotion price. However, if you decided to go with annual payments on your multi-year contract, when you decide to add on seats within that contract, you would be at list. Okay. Um, does anyone, if anyone else has any questions, now is the time to submit those. We'll wait a minute or two and make sure there aren't anything, any other questions that we can answer for you at this time. Uh, in the meantime, I'd like to thank Megan and Megan uh, for uh, being here and fielding those questions for us, um, and Megan for uh, showing us a little bit of a sneak peek peek of what that advanced workflow is going to be looking like and giving you an idea of what kinds of features you can expect with your enterprise. Okay. Wait one more minute here. All right. Um, looks like 
we don't have any more questions coming in at this time. If um, you do think of something, um, please feel free to contact us and we will gladly answer that for you. Um, thank you very much to everyone for attending today and we hope that we've given you some valuable information. Have a great afternoon.